watch your P's and your Q's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Get it out. Uh, Get it all out. Oh. <laughs> I don't think that's possible, my friend. Get what? To get it all out. Oh, it's impossible? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You need a giant... You need, like, a, the world's biggest porta potty and just shit it all out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they can call it San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> they need more of those in San Francisco. There's, there's no um, no restrooms available. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's okay. It's bad. <clears throat> That's why all the bums are shitting on the streets. Well, we're in trash cans. I've... <laughs> I've seen no less than like maybe five times someone like walking to the middle of the street, just bending over, mooning the whole crowd, <laughs> and just taking a, a giant shit in the middle of the street. <laughs> Men and women. I mean, it would have to be a giant shit, wouldn't it? Like, once you get to that desperation point where you're taking a shit in the middle of the street, it's probably huge. <laughs> right. Uh, or really watery. One of, one of the two. Either way, the street cleaning crew doesn't like you. Right. They're just going for fame and glory. <laughs> Epic dump. <laughs> Dude, men and women, so, uh, like both. What? Really? You've seen women do this? Yeah. You've seen women drop trout and take poop in the middle of the street? Yeah. I've gotten them to San Francisco now. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's happening, dude. That's where all the action's going on. Apparently. Also, uh, future, future uh, earthquakes. So. Yeah. I try to stay away from those lines. My brother was warning me about a tidal wave. He said a 20-foot tidal wave was supposed to be coming through. When? Oh, it was like scheduled to that. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't it was they? like Aerosmith coming through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get your, get your tickets. The tidal wave is coming <laughs> Aren't they, aren't they uh, no. all scheduled events? That's, that's my understanding. Yeah, yeah, no joke. Good old laser-guided hurricanes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Nikola Tesla. Yep. <coughs> poor, so, uh, poor guy. I've been keeping this bottle of A1 in my glove compartment for like a month now. Finally had the occasion to use it just a second ago. Oh, yeah? I... It, man, being, home, being homeless is great. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. What kind of uh, what kind of burger was it? Um, Applebee's, uh, bacon with some kind of cheese on it. A beef burger. Oh yeah, fuck that turkey burger shit. This isn't San Francisco, dude. This is Texas. <laughs> we don't. We have an overabundance of cows. You have to eat them so they don't like take over. Right. No sacred cows here. It wasn't a chicken fried steak burger? Oh, that sounds pretty delicious, but no. <laughs> I had my first call chicken fried steak, steak when I went to, to uh, Texas. First ever. Yeah, in South Carolina, we always call it country fried steak. I think it's confusing to call it chicken fried steak because you're like, well, which animal is it? Like, is <laughs> it chicken or is it steak? Right. But Aren't they both? No, they're not both from the same animal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're definitely from San Francisco. <laughs> wow. That oh. was the most vegan, you won the most vegan comment ever. <laughs> <laughs> a chicken and a cow, I mean, it's the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure they're interchangeable in Hindu. <laughs> <laughs> you have to stop for chickens crossing the street as well. well. Which makes sense considering the joke. The chicken isn't sacred here. It should be. <laughs> it should be, right? I mean, it is a dinosaur, so. Pretty long lived. Yeah, poor chickens. I'll so, uh, let's think of something to talk about. Um, we can talk current, about current events. Current events. The world's ending, like always. <laughs> uh, the 23rd of December. <laughs> I've gone every every month of the 23rd since like September. <laughs> so let's just add December to it. Yeah, 23rd of December. Shit's gone down. <laughs> That'd be really funny if it actually did. Uh, it never does. Like it never does when people predict it. But no, no, it, it would be like it would be like March first, 
<laughs> or something completely wow didn't see that coming right. <laughs> especially if we have some kind of automated AI going through and changing events so the world never ends on time bitch yeah they go they go find out all the predictions and then they're like okay this is the prime spot to put it so it evades every single one <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but I think I think humans are kind of like eagerly searching out that day which things will just hit the fan dude humans humans have been wishing for that day from day one yeah ever since they found out about the bible and revelations they're like wait this life sucks and it's boring like bring the apocalypse yeah never that's kind of kind of sadly true yeah the world uh the world only isn't boring but it would be a lot more exciting with a few fucking zombies running around that's for sure <laughs> right like, can, can you imagine how fast those girls in high heels and, and uh, yoga pants would just be zombie chow <laughs> maybe I mean, you should have done some running instead of yoga you dumb bitch <laughs> right I mean the, the heel the heel would be actually a pretty decent weapon if it was one of those yeah they wouldn't use it as that they don't want to use a Dolce Gabbana hill for a weapon sir <laughs> They'd be like trying to run from the from the yoga place to the sauna, like real quick. Like, let me get over here. <laughs> let me dive in. Amazing, amazing zombies to no avail. <laughs> right. Their eyes are impervious to my maze. <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't have been a social justice warrior that hated males and uh, should have carried a pickaxe instead of a fucking thing of maze. On Turns the, out the real threats to womanhood were zombies. On the plus side, though, the zombies probably wouldn't be able to smell them very well under all that fucking makeup and. And mascara and everything. <laughs> like Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Predator, covered in mud. <laughs> yeah, they, they have, <laughs> they're protected already. Uh, they don't even know it. And cheap, and cheap uh, Bath and Body Works perfume. They come in a one gallon spray bottle. The zombie's like, what the hell is this thing? Like, it doesn't even smell good. I'm pretty sure this is tropical kiwi. What? This, this isn't a person. This is some kind of uh, this, this is some kind of fruit agglomation. Agglomation. This isn't a human being. I can't need this. A mall. A mall. Where is my ass? Who reeks of living dog? Would <laughs> be one of the first things. <laughs> um. So you said some stuff was supposed to be going down in the end of December for realsies, though, huh? That's what my buddy was saying. He was talking about. He was saying that the the pedo stuff was supposed to blow blow up and even more, and that that whole uh, USN thing, which that's the first I've I haven't been doing any research. Like I've been away from the research for quite a while. Uh, but he said something about USN, which is like I told you in the chat, like a, a, a US digital currency, cryptocurrency. Which is just a way for them to funnel money that much easier. Yeah. Well, that's what the mark of the beast. That's what the mark of the beast was supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be, yeah, supposedly further cementing the the control structure. Yeah, I mean, it, but it kind of sucks because like ten percent of Americans don't have access to a debit card or a bank account, and are primarily cash, you know, paycheck right. to paycheck, right? Type people, and I don't know how they would deal with a cryptocurrency, but yeah, well, the the cash. The cash is supposed to disappear. I mean, I doubt it's going to disappear completely, but I remember back in the late 1900s, they were saying it was already to like 3% of all the currency at that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was just ones and zeros on a computer somewhere. Yeah. How are you going to buy drugs without cash, though? See, that, that's why I think that they started legalizing marijuana, because they realized that like the most popular drug for white people that was illegal was marijuana. So they're like, well, you know, we don't want to have all the white people piss off at us. We have to make it legal so they can buy with a debit card. Right. And, and then we can make all the other stuff that we don't like. Like they, they really hate crystal meth. Like crystal meth is the thing that government hates the most because it's something that rednecks can go into the woods in a trailer and cook up themselves. So like they can't, they can't be in charge of distribution or funneling that money from like Afghanistan and opium builds or from Colombian fucking like cocoa plants where they're making cocaine. 
Right. So they came in charge of distribution and market prices and stuff. So basically, just like all in the hands of the manufacturers. And they're like, oh, fuck that. I want a piece of that. <laughs> and they go after real hard work. But I guess DMT and other psychedelics, they're like Schedule 1 drugs, are probably more scary to them because they uh, elevate people's consciousnesses. And we can't have that. No. No, no. No, we're in Afghanistan for we're in Afghanistan for weapons of mass destruction. The weapons of mass destruction are there. We're not there to protect the op- yeah, we're not there to mass. we're not there to protect the opiate fields. We promise. <laughs> Even though they've been called with like this C one forties chock full of black tar heroin on pallets, <laughs> like nah, it's cool. Remember that CIA plane went down in the nineties across like the. One of the flyover states, you know, like Kansas or something, and then it spread cocaine over four miles <laughs> whenever it crashed. Really? Everyone was like, oh, yeah, dude, it was a big fucking deal. George Carlin made a joke about it. It was funny. Like, but, like, they still denied it. People don't realize that that's where they get all their black funding project money for, like, flying saucers and all the other crazy shit they do is from drugs and yeah. child kidnapping. It's a lot. Did you hear about that? That couple in San Francisco, um, in 2004, they they were vegans and they had two kids. One was four and one was two um, at the time, and they had a very like a, a very healthy vegan diet as far as you can get you know healthy with a vegan diet. And uh, CPS took away their kids because they said they were endangering them and neglecting them because they weren't feeding them a balanced diet. Seriously? And they fought for years trying to get those kids back. They didn't see their older their older daughter who was four whenever she got taken. Um, and they didn't see her for years because the, the, some kind of court order. Uh, apparently she was on a whole bunch of pharmaceuticals because they get paid based on how many pharmaceuticals they get like prescribed by the pharmaceutical companies. Like th- That's why on average the uh, a foster kid in America has four per- prescription drugs they're prescribed. Because it makes a bunch of money for like the uh, orphanages and whatnot, but uh, they didn't see their daughter for years, and then they got in touch with some hackers, and they did like a, a facial recognition scan and scanned the dark web to see if they could find her anywhere, and they found her on a Saudi Arabian stuff film where like she was eight years old at the time, and she was getting literally like screwed to death by some kind of Saudi dude, and that's when they figured out that she uh, she was dead. She wow. was sold by CPS, which is actually a corporation. It's a private corporation owned by Donacorp. CPS? Um, Donac- yeah, it's not It's not a part of the government. It's a private corporation. Um, they, they got in trouble this year for uh, 208,000 kids, they said, were sold into sex trafficking by Donacorp, which is the owner of CPS. Dynacorp? Yeah. What's that? Which sounds like dinosaur, you? doesn't it? Yeah. I guess, man, shit's fucking nuts that we allow the government to do such horrible things. Yeah. But it happens like to so few people, and it's never like a big group at the same time, like located in the same place. So it's that whole like that whole saying, uh, they came for blah blah, and then they came for blah blah, and then they came for me, and no one was else to say no or whatever. Like it's never scared. enough people to actually rebel at the same time. Yeah. Right. They're, they're always scattered. Like if there's a whole bunch in the same same location, then then they can actually rustle up some power. Yeah, but unfortunately, most of the mass demonstrations we see are just completely 100 percent made up. Yeah, I had no idea that that whole Occupy Wall Street thing that went on years ago. It was uh, started by this guy from Anonymous. Um, I can't remember his name, but. Uh, he apparently got caught hacking by the FBI and he made a deal where he would start working with them if they didn't put his ass in jail. And so, so like they told him basically to start Occupy Wall Street for whatever reason. And uh, he did. So like the whole Occupy Wall Street movement was actually created by the CIA and the FBI by working in tandem with each other. So like that huge demonstration there was like, yeah. It was all created by the government to see how many people would stand up and actually fight for whatever. I don't know. I have really no idea why they did it, but it was totally made up by the government. Well, I don't. I don't. Feel like, I don't feel like it accomplished a whole lot. 
they had accomplished shit, dude. <laughs> of course, all they had accomplished anything is like mass executions, like like French Revolution style. Put a guillotine in the middle of the Washington Mall and just start having fun. We're gonna go back to the Dark Ages. Hell yeah! Yeah. <laughs> you know how I feel about the word dark. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lauda actually. The dark information. Age. You know, you know George and Lauda, right? The Leons, huh? George and Lauda Leon, you know them? No. She, no. she, she said that that's supposed to happen. Actually, the the lynching is supposed to come back around at some. Point. Oh, it will. Like for sure, uh, they're, they're they're setting up for it. You can kind of tell. Yeah. Once all especially that... with like those huge fields of uh, like gigantic coffins, plastic disposable coffins that they have in Georgia. Uh, supposed to carry like five bodies per coffin, oh. which is nice. At least they'll keep the families together. <laughs> so bad. Uh, it's so bad. Yeah, it's horrible. It's um, w- what's your opinion on? I haven't ever talked to you about this. I guess we don't talk about, like in person enough um, to talk about it. What's your opinion on uh, like uh, secret space program type stuff? Oh, secret space program. Uh, I don't have a lot of opinions on it. I have. I really haven't looked into it very much. I, I kind of feel like the space stuff is kind of jokes. I feel like I feel like the the technology that does exist is far beyond that, and that's just there as a front. But I haven't looked into it. Um, so you don't believe in like anti-gravity technology? No, I think there's advanced technology out there, but I feel like the official narrative is just off, like always. We got guys building hovercraft in their garage. That's kind of like anti gravity. What kind of hovercraft are you talking about? Like the like fan. one with like the skirt that goes around it and a big fan? Yeah, big fans. Not anti gravity, but. Have you seen the. Uh, I made an ionic glider. Have you seen those things? Uh uh-uh. It's really cool. You take like balsa wood, tin foil, and some six gauge wire and a DC to AC power converter and. Ramp it up with like 120 volts, but change it over to DC and uh, funnel through the wire and it goes down in the tinfoil. I don't know how it works. They haven't actually physically explained how it works because no one knows. <laughs> but you flip on the power and a little triangle made out of balsa wood will sit there and float above the ground just using electricity. Wow. It's really easy to make. It only took me like three hours to make it. I made it in high school. Did did you follow like a YouTube tutorial or something? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back in the in the very beginnings of YouTube. I used to build. I used to build all kinds. We used to build airplanes, like uh, gas powered, little little uh, com, little tiny internal combustion engine. Oh, like like remote control stuff. Yeah. Oh, well, not remote. It's radio control. But yeah. Is there a difference? Yeah, remote control means there's a wire attached from your controller to the thing. Really? Yeah. So whenever you use a remote control for your television, it's really a radio control? Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that. I mean, that's what it is as far as, like, electronic and gas-driven toys. I don't know. The, the remote for a television, might that might be correct. I don't know. But you, you say radio if there's if it's going through the airwaves rather than a wire. Yeah. Infrared the I guess is a is a remote control for television. Yeah, right. Anyways, boring boring conversation, sir. Let's uh let's set this up. Um uh, What's the most interesting job you've ever had? Most interesting job. I haven't had that many jobs. Probably the. I've only had delivery jobs and ran the eBay business. 
And out of the delivery jobs, delivering people is more interesting than delivering pizza. Yeah, unless you're, you know, behind human trafficking, in which case delivering pizza is delivering people. <laughs> uh, so bad. Human trafficking. Guess what I did in high school for a, for a job? What? I was a birthday clown. You were a clown? <laughs> yeah. My name was Dazzle. It Dazzle you. the clown. You look kind of clowny already. Yeah, I try. <laughs> It's all makeup aware. But it wasn't just a clown. It was like Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, anything that kids wanted at their birthday. It was like a man. So you came like paired with the bounce house? Actually, yeah, I did do, I mean, we, we had a bounce house from the company that were, at the company I worked at. Um, but like there was like a separate crew that did that. But sometimes I operated it. But uh, did I did you? like prop assisted magic tricks, balloon twisting, and face painting. Nice. Did you, ever have a, did you ever have a bounce house fly away on you? Oh, God. Yeah, multiple times. One was really? across the interstate. Oh, yeah. Dude, though, they, like, they fly. Like, I, I can't believe there aren't more kites than just bounce houses. No, because like, they, you, are you joking or are you, are you serious? You actually have... No, no, I'm completely serious. They fucking fly, dude. If, you're, if you don't stay those things down deep, they take the fuck off. And if there's kids inside of it, it is bad. Like, oh scariest time ever. There was like four kids in this bounce house and they just started rolling across this person's massive rich ass backyard with kids inside of it. Like we had people yelling, like talking about lawsuits as it was happening. <laughs> We're gonna sue you. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Boss was freaking the hell out. She was uh she was like thirty years old. I was like seventeen, eighteen years old. She was gorgeous. Anytime we had like a uh, a Batman or a Spider Man Theme birthday party, and she like came as like a uh, oh bad girl. Whew. Jesus Christ! Yeah, and, and I was in tights too, which made it that much more fun. <laughs> you were in tights. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I had to do the whole tights thing, especially dress up as Batman and Spider Man. So you, I wasn't so you, very convincing. <laughs> I had to shave my beard, which was like. Panic decides to eat the cord, you bastard. Can you still hear me? Barely. Can you still hear me? Your dog is eating the cord? Better? Yeah, he was trying to. He wants attention. He's like, why are you talking to me, Gary? I'm more interesting than Steven is. <laughs> I can't even see him. Where's he at? What's up, buddy? Here. Hey. He's black. Yeah. He's like black as soot. Yeah, that's what happens whenever you get God, your goddess sends you black dogs from the universe. <laughs> Alice, and, uh, Alice sent him? Yeah, in fact, his first name before it was Panic, his first name was Al. Really? No. For Alice. Yeah, and I was like, eh, this doesn't feel right. And uh, his, Cheryl was like, his name was really Alice. Panic. I was like, Really? My book. What? His name was really Al. I didn't hear you. What? Was his name really Al? Or are you joking? Yeah, for like a day. Yeah. I don't. I don't know like where he came from. He's just. No, I called him. You called him Al. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no idea what his actual name was. He just showed up in the middle of the street. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you were saying, like, somebody gave him to you, and then they were like, oh, here's Al. Oh, no. I was walking to the grocery store at 3 o'clock in the morning, the day after, like, the morning after you made the first video of my book, and he just, like, ran up to me out of nowhere. That's, and, that's, uh, that's pretty crazy. Look, that's that's pretty, like, impossible. Dude, it scared the shit out of me, because he, like, ran up to me like he was like, going to attack me. So I started running, <coughs> and I tripped over one of those, like, uh, like yellow concrete stopping your car from running into another car thing in parking lots. Uh -huh. Because I kept looking behind me. And it was like exactly like it was for my book. It was nuts. And Did you then fall I was down? Like, well, I, yeah, yeah, I fell down. He jumped right on top of me. <laughs> and Dude. he was a, kind of aggressive like. And I was like holding him back. And then he, his face got so close to mine, he started licking me. And I got up and went inside the grocery store. 
And he tried to follow me into the fucking grocery store. And they're like, hey, you can't bring your dog into the grocery store. I'm like, it's not my dog. He just showed up. And I came back out of the grocery store like 20 minutes later, and he was still there and followed me home and has been my dog ever since. Yeah, that's, that literally is exactly straight out of the book, except for there's no bus. I know, dude. Was there, <laughs> yeah. was, was there a school bus going uh, by at the same time? <laughs> no, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. So there was a school bus, it's probably not legal food. Yeah, that would be like that would be like a ghost school bus or something. The creepiest thing that has actually occurred from my book is those uh, you know that clock I put out on my book, the the golden orbs that spins around, the mm -hmm. orbs of Kronos or whatever. Like finding another clock that was like that, which I haven't seen another clock like that since I was a kid, and it just being given to me in the middle of like nowhere, and the, and the fact that the, the the balls were already detached from the, the base of that clock, and so they're like loose inside of the glass dome thing. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? This is exactly out of my book. Like, I haven't seen another one of these clocks for years. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, giving them. Is it like balls hanging from strings, like those little clickety-clack thing? No, it's like a... It's like a... It has like a metal spoke in the middle, like an axle. And then it has four little golden orbs spaced evenly around it. And they spin really fast one way. And then it stops and spins really fast the other way. So there are like these four orbs spinning around mm. in the base of the clock. It's a, weird, it's a weird looking clock. I've never seen one like it except for my mom's house. And apparently my mother-in-law, whenever they were moving, they're like, hey, do you want this weird clock? I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's magic. Of course I want it. You still have it? Like with you? Uh, it's in storage. It's like one of the reasons I... I have to pay my storage unit uh -huh. because of those. I've, and I, in my book, I make a parallel between those orbs and like the coins from the, the tarot deck. Like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with tarot or not, but there's four different parts of tarot. Just like there's four suits in a card deck, like spades, hearts, clubs, and whatever. Yeah. Um, in tarot, there's swords, coins, um, cups, swords, coins, cups, and wands and I found like something almost evenly spaced apart from like for instance the first thing I found well let me tell you this little story it's kind of cool you might like it um whenever my friend Caroline moved away I gave her this wand that I made like a Harry Potter style wand that I just I found a really cool looking stick I carved it painted it and stuff mm -hmm. so I gave her this wand whenever she was leaving and a pocket knife and one of my AA coins and a couple other things. And like I, I made it, I dressed it up kind of like it was, you know, the four different, like the magician offering the full four different items. Yeah. Um, so whenever I was uh, in my backyard one day, there was like this little tiny little fucking crop circle thing. It looked like someone had mowed a little perfect circle. And in the middle of that perfect circle was this really weird, gnarly looking stick. I was like, oh man, that would make a perfect wand. <laughs> And it was after I found out about Alice, so I painted it all black and shiny and stuff because it looks like tentacles. Mm -hmm. and I was like, I've got a new wand now because I kind of I kind of regretted giving mine away to Caroline. <laughs> and then, like a week later, my mother-in-law gives me the, the coins, which are the four orbs of time. And then, like a a week after that, I'm cleaning out my mother-in-law's shed, and I found my my old trunk of stuff that I I thought I'd lost. Um, whenever I went to rehab back in 2012, um, turns out she still had it in her shed. It was like covered in dust. So I'm like, oh, wow, this is cool. And I opened it up and it was like, it was locked and it hadn't been opened in years. And, uh, inside of it, I found like the only gift my mom had ever given me, which was a really weird, shitty dagger that like had a, had the green man on it. And it had like a, it, it looks, it looks like something that like a, a fantasy nerd would own. Like a really long, weird-looking fantasy dagger. Um, it's called the Dragon Dagger. Nice. I was like, oh, that's weird. Because I, I, so I found a sword, a wand, uh, the coins, and so I was like, well, I, the universe is going to give me a cup, obviously somewhere. So I kept looking around for a, a cup, thinking that, like, you know, the universe is going to give it to me. I, and 
it was the first time I had like started looking for it as opposed to the universe is like obviously giving it to me, you know? Yeah, right. So, so I misinterpreted several cups. I was like, like this Wiley Coyote cup I had when I was a kid. I was like, oh, I used to love this cup when I was a kid. And uh, finally, I, I, I was laying down in bed and having a really trippy experience, like a, uh, a hallucination. And Panic was laying down on my lap and he reached his paw out and scratched the fuck out of my left eye. And I couldn't see out of it. And I was holding both my eyes because it hurt so bad. And I opened my eye and I looked down and there was this, this like belly bag, this like fanny pack mm-hmm. that Carolina had given me before she left. It was like a, a black fanny pack with green alien heads all over it that glowed <laughs> in the dark. Nice. And I was like, holy shit, th- th- this is totally my cup. It was a fucking fanny pack uh, container, you know, a vessel or whatever. And I was like, this is just like from my book two because uh, in, in book two, aliens play a big part. And uh, I, I don't know, for some reason, it made perfect sense to me during that point in time, even though right now I'm saying it, it doesn't really make sense. But uh, I was like, I found all of my magical items. So I took them all. I put like the sword or dagger going one way, the wand going another way. I wrapped it all together with a fanny pack and I put the orbs inside of the fanny pack. It was like my magical items or whatever. Yeah. It was four trashy ass things. You know, one thing I found in my backyard, one thing I hadn't had in years, one thing from a broken clock and a fanny pack were my most important possessions on planet Earth. Like, <laughs> I, I would never get rid of those things. I mean, so much machinery for some Are purpose. they all still together, like in the storage unit? <laughs> yeah, I wrapped up in a in my childhood blanket and put inside of a, a box that's, that's fragile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then after that, I started finding keys, like really randomly. Like and, physical uh, keys? Yeah, like physical old school keys that wouldn't open anything today. <laughs> you know, but the ones with just stuff. two little daggers pointing down? Yeah. <laughs> did, those ever, so did those ever open anything, or were they always just jokes? I, I'm pretty sure these were just like mock-ups of what keys used to like. I don't think they ever actually opened anything. Yeah. One, a close friend of mine gave me like a day after I met him. He's like, he saw the key that was hanging from my necklace, and he's like, "Huh, you like keys?" I'm like, "Well, apparently, I, I guess I do. It's important for some reason. The universe is giving them to me." Yeah. He's like, "Here." He pulled like a silver key out of his pocket. It had a figure eight as like the handle part. It was like old as hell. He's like, "I found this like sticking up out of the sand at a beach in California." Like when I was 12, and I've held, held on to it for years. I don't don't know why, but I think it's for you. <laughs> and he, he gave it to me. I was like, holy hell, this is crazy. He was like, a friend or he was just a random person? Um, he, he was a friend of mine. His name was Shay. He worked at the, he worked at the grocery store where I found Panic and Front. Like oh. he was the overnight cashier. He had a some social disorders, kind of like I do, and uh, it was really awkward around people. Mm. I met the dude because I was checking out, and this lady in front of me, this old-ass lady, he was just talking to her because she talks to everybody, and he was, he was he said, uh, yeah, she's like this old lady that sits on top of your chest while you're asleep, and I instantly knew he was talking about the old hag idea of... Uh, what do they call that? Sleep paralysis? Yeah, I mean, right. Research on sleep paralysis. He wasn't talking about the old lady buying so stuff? So I was like, oh. The old lady what? No, 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 no. He, he was talking about sleep paralysis <laughs> with the old lady. And I was like, oh, you mean the old hag from sleep paralysis? And he's like, yeah, you know about that? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, sometimes it's a black cat. Sometimes it's a goblin. Sometimes it's a demon. Have you alien, experienced whatever. sleep paralysis? Yeah, twice. Yeah. I have too, but not, uh, not with like an entity. Like I've, I've fallen asleep like with my head face down on the pillow and then just stopped. Couldn't breathe very well anymore. Yeah. And, uh, and you couldn't move? You would, I would be dreaming that you know I was drowning or somebody was suffocating me, but the paralysis was there so I couldn't wake myself up. But you were aware that you were asleep? Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if I was aware that I was asleep. It, 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 was, it, it was just the feeling of I'm suffocating and I can't do anything about it. 
that was just what the feeling was. Not fun. A lot of people see uh, black shadow form people whenever they have sleep paralysis. Like shadow beings, shadow people, whatever. My friend... Uh, when sleep he, paralysis is pretty scary. My friend, when he was here, had an experience of like an actual demon. He had sleep paralysis and the demon was like trying to like pull his jaw open. And he had to like... Oh my God. Yeah, he had to like... I think he invoked Jesus' name or something. I don't know. He called on some sort of deity. Dude, dude. there's something to that shit, dude. Like, you know how many people who have had alien abduction, like, experiences their entire life and, and aren't religious will call out for Jesus and that stuff will stop instantly? Like, it's yeah, yeah. Stuff. There is something to it, like, for sure. Uh, there has to be. Um, in fact, in the, if, you be, if you read the Lesser Keys of Solomon, one of Solomon's magical texts, he talks about how, like, the, the the dead and risen God or whatever, um, he assigns it a, a, a Kabbalistic number, 644, um, which is like the only, like he's going through all these different demons that Solomon's trapping. I don't know if you're familiar with the story of Solomon, but he traps demons inside of bottles and mm. using his magical ring, he puts his magical ring at the stopper of the bottle. This is a biblical like, story? Um, this is non canonical like non canonical biblical texts like Gnostic scripture. Okay. But uh Solomon wrote three different magical books, like three different wizarding books that are used in Gnostic mysticism all the time. I've heard of the Keys of Solomon, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the lesser keys of Solomon specifically. Um he's going through all the different demons that he summons and then traps inside of his bottles, which is where we get the idea of genies in a bottle. Mm. Um he's going through all these different demons that he's summoning and, and asking them questions basically because he has magical ring that he can control demons with. And he's asking each one of them, like what their antithesis is, like what their enemy is, their, their, their the thing that can beat them. And like half of them, the answer is Jesus. Really? Like basically this is before Jesus existed. He refers to it as the dead and risen God or whatever. But yeah, like Jesus apparently is like the thing that shuts down like 50% of these demons. Huh. And I was like, that's really fucking strange considering Jesus wasn't born for like 1500 years later. It must just be the Jesus archetype. Which I believe that does exist. I mean, the Jesus archetype is a pretty solid archetype. Well, I mean, look at how much power it has just in the external world, you know? Like, all the churches claim to have Jesus as their, their basis. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, dad must be there. I, no, he's not. I know people personally who have had conversions or who have had experiences where they called on Jesus. I've had people that have conversions and they, their whole life changes around because of, well, I guess that's it. Sorry guys. That's it. That's it. Steven number three? I don't know. All right, guys, take care.